I'm joined now by Abby Maxman, president and CEO of Oxfam America. Thank you so much for joining us. And as you just heard from that doctor, hospitals are running out of fuel in Gaza, as you well know. Now, Secretary Blinken said that they've identified ways to get fuel into hospitals for people in the south. What's your reaction to that? And, you know, we have been reporting over the last several days, NBC News has, that Hamas has been stockpiling fuel uh, in Gaza. How necessary is fuel to the aid effort right now? Well, thanks so much, Gabe. Fuel is essential, as is water and food. The scale of the humanitarian need in Gaza is huge and, and really growing exponentially by the day. As you know, there's more than two million people, a million of whom are children in the Gaza Strip who are facing this terrifying future where food and water are absent. And with the absence of fuel is also the absence of hygiene and water systems in hospitals like you, we were just hearing in bakeries. Nothing is able to work. People are running out of food, clean water, and medical supplies, and the situation is truly dire. And Abby, the sticking point here, though, seems to be this idea that how can you get fuel into Gaza without having it end up in the hands of Hamas? How confident are you that aid organizations could distribute this fuel without supplying Hamas? Well, we continue to have, as we did before this crisis and now, have safeguards in how we deliver aid and uh, all of our aid to people in, in Gaza. And that is continuing to be an issue uh, of getting the shipments that are needed to the people is just the priority of the moment. And we really recognize what is needed now, above all, is the end of the siege, uh, with full humanitarian access so that we can get our scale up our humanitarian option uh, hu humanitarian operations we need the protection of civilians the release of hostages and above all an immediate ceasefire so civilians are already experiencing such extraordinary suffering and it's increasing constantly as as we're speaking and they're they're really bearing the unacceptable burden as hostilities continue. People want dignity and security, and they need food and water and safety now. Abby, you mentioned safeguards, though, but how can you keep fuel out of the hands of Hamas when the organization runs the government there? Well, we we work with, uh, is, uh, with partners locally who whose commitment are to the communities that we serve. And we continue to ensure that uh, they are able to provide the services to the people in need. What we're seeing is people needing safe shelter. Half of the Palestinians in Gaza are displaced from their homes, and many are sheltering in hospitals, churches, and schools. And they actually want to survive and keep safe. Our own staff, we have 33 staff in Gaza, and they are worried about their lives just surviving through the night and the next day. They are focusing on their survival and supporting friends and family. And we are in regular contact with them and we work closely with two organizations inside Gaza who are trying to scale up our activities now. Uh, the Palestinian Medical Relief Society and the Culture and Free Thought Association are all doing excellent work getting the the, what is needed, only a fraction, unfortunately, of what is needed because of access and the lack of access to what is needed. But we are not concerned about diversion. We're concerned about saving lives. And Abby, the Rafa crossing has been open now for eight trucks to pass through. You mentioned this might just be a fraction of what is needed, but how has the opening of the Rafa crossing impacted your aid operation in Gaza over the last few days? Well, really, the opening of the Rafa crossing, while it is appreciated, it is a drop in the ocean of need. The needs are absolutely enormous uh, for everything, food, water. People are living on tinned, uh, tinned food only. They have no access to supplies. And what is getting in is a fraction of what was needed prior to this crisis every day. And so while we appreciate and are encouraged that there is some beginning of access, this needs to be scaled up enormously. We have half a million Palestinian civilians that are trapped right now in a siege within a siege in Northern Gaza. And civilians are being deprived of items essential to their survival. 
food, water, fuel, medicines, as we've talked about. And this is really serving as collective punishment and a violation of international humanitarian law if they cannot get the basic things they need to survive. And Abby, um, are any Oxfam workers included in those who were able to cross into Egypt? Well, we have one staff member who was outside of Gaza trying to get into his family, and he has been waiting to get into Gaza for 26 days. Uh, all 33 of our staff and their families have been trapped inside Gaza. Uh, many are living in conditions that they describe having moved. Those who were able to move south did. Uh, being appreciative of living in single rooms with only 60 people, enormously difficult, harrowing conditions that they're living in. They want to and are ready to be able to scale up the humanitarian operations when it's safe and they're able to do so. And Abby, earlier in the hour, we talked with our reporter about how the Palestinian Red Crescent ambulances um, they were targeted in a strike in southern Gaza, apparently. How dangerous is it for aid workers on the ground right now, even in the south? It is extremely unsafe for everybody. There is nobody inside Gaza who feels safe at the moment. We are hearing harrowing stories of from our staff. Certainly the blackout last weekend was absolutely terrifying when we had 36 hours where we did not get contact with them. When we did, we were relieved that they had survived, but everybody has lost a huge amount of family members. They've given up their homes. They've uh, had to flee with no time and no warning and have lost everything. And so that's why we continue to call for an immediate and safe release of hostages, an immediate ceasefire, and a protection of all civilians, which is absolutely paramount. Abby Maxman with Oxfam. Abby, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.